Hi, I'm Talia Swartz. I'm assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, uh, and I'm a physician scientist. I take care of patients with infectious diseases, specifically HIV, and I'm a researcher, and we study the pathogenesis of HIV in the laboratory, and I've always been interested in host pathogen responses and how people and their bodies respond to getting sick from infections. And I've always also been really fascinated by the infections themselves, the bacteria and the viruses that cause the infections. And so um, infectious diseases was the perfect field for me. And um, I, love, I love the field and really happy to talk about it. Um, I'm happy to speak on Twitter. If you want to ping me, it's Talia Swartz uh, at Twitter. And um, I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about the research that we've been doing in the laboratory. Uh, my pronouns are she and hers. And um, yeah, so let me tell you what we've been working on. The title of my talk is P2X Receptor Signaling in HIV Entry and Inflammation. Uh, P2X receptors are an interesting type of signaling receptors that we think are important in mediating inflammation in people with HIV. So 35 million people worldwide are currently living with HIV AIDS. And this is really important because it's a diagnosis that exists all around the world and this disease is not curable. People are able to live long and pretty healthy lives while on appropriate antiretroviral therapy, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to develop a cure or any way to prevent the disease from being acquired um, in the form of a vaccine, and therefore, we are stuck with this as a chronic illness. Um, the problem is that people who are taking antiretroviral therapy develop things that are set up from chronic inflammation, showing, showing you a flame um, to suggest that this has become a chronic illness. And for those who are taking lifelong therapy, they actually develop problems, most, most commonly heart disease. So heart disease is something that can be caused by an inflammatory process, but it's not clearly understood what mediates that inflammation in the, in the cells that are infected that results in this heart disease. So our laboratory is interested in studying purinergic receptors, which are a pro-inflammatory class of receptors that are expressed on the surface of a lot of different types of cells. And the way that they work is that they can detect ATP. That's the energy of the cell that's found outside of cells. And so this shouldn't actually be in a normal state. ATP should not be outside of cells, but if a a nearby cell is dead or dying, it can release its intracellular ATP to the outside, and then another cell can recognize that something is wrong and then undergo signaling to tell itself or to other cells that something is bad and that we need to undergo some changes to fix this problem. The receptors that we're interested in studying are the P2X subtype, um, and these are ATP-gated cation channels. So they can, when they recognize ATP and ATP binds to the receptor, can either efflux or influx cations like potassium or calcium. And this can in turn result in signaling that impacts the cell's physiology. Now the way that we can test the virus is by looking at infection using a reporter virus. So the virus has a clone gene that has a green fluorescent protein. And so when a cell becomes infected, it will actually fluoresce green. And so I'm showing you here a picture of a CD4 T cell, which is being infected with this green virus. And you can see a little virus particle inside the cell. When we infect the cell, so here is a micrograph showing you uninfected cells where you don't see anything. But with HIV, you can see that the cells brightly fluoresce green. And therefore, we can test the effect of an inhibitor and to see what would happen if we add that. So we would expect if we added an inhibitor of HIV replication, we would see less green. And sure enough, when we add an inhibitor of the purinergic receptors, you can see that the infection is nearly completely abrogated and you see almost no green. So in order to test um, infection, we can use cell lines. In order to test inflammation, we actually need to test this in tissues. And the tissues where we can observe the most robust inflammation is in lymph tissue. That's pockets of tissue that can mediate inflama inflammation and inflammatory responses. And in this specific case, we can test it in human tonsil tissue. So what do we do? We can take tonsils from people who are undergoing a tonsillectomy 
And then we can cut up these little pieces of tissue and grow them on these collagen rafts. We can then infect them with HIV in the same way that I showed you before. And then we can ask whether HIV infection can stimulate the inflammation and whether inhibition with those same drugs can block the inflammatory signaling. So in order to do this, we can take a biopsy, a human tonsil biopsy, and we have a surgeon who provides us with tissue. We can infect with HIV with or without the drug, and then we can put this in a suspension like in the picture I'm showing you, and then can sample at serial days after infection. So here I'm showing you two, five, eight, and 12 days after infection. This is a graph showing the infection of uninfected and infected tonsils. And what we're looking for is the HIV antigen or protein P24. As we see rising P24, that tells us that the cells or the tissues are becoming infected. So you can see that when HIV is not added, there's no, there's no productive infection, but that when there is HIV, over the course of three days, six days, nine days, 12 days post-infection, you can see that there's a rise in the HIV infection as indicated by this protein. And then we can ask, what happens when you add the drug? So the same drug that blocked the infection that I showed you before, now is blocking infection in these tonsil tissues as well. And you can see that it's happening across the, the full infection period from three to 12 days after infection. Then we can ask, what about inflam inflam inflammatory signaling? Um, and so in this case, we're looking at a specific cytokine. So this is a chemical messenger that can be generated from cells in response to this signaling. And we see also that HIV can stimulate secretion of this IL-1 beta cytokine, and that that's much lower in the uninfected condition. Then when we add the same drug, we can see that the effect is reduced, that the drug can block the production of IL-1 beta. It doesn't bring it quite down to the uninfected, but it does bring it down significantly. And so that's interesting. And it tells us that these receptors, when you block these receptors, not only can you block HIV infection, but you can block the downstream inflammation that comes as a result of the signaling from that receptor. And so we have a model here where we think that HIV can enter cells and maybe activating these receptors that can activate this long pathway that results in that chemical messenger IL-1 beta that I told you about, and that possibly by blocking this, we could both block HIV infection and HIV-stimulated inflammation. And so why is this important? So we have a, a picture here where HIV can activate these receptors and it can activate this inflammation. And then these chemical messengers, cytokines, can be released into the circulation and can talk to different cells to get them to mount an inflammatory response. And ultimately that can result in things like clotting and inflammation in the heart, which can cause things like heart attacks. And so our goal is to envision new therapies that might block this pathway that would improve the outcomes of people with HIV. And so hopefully in moving forward, we'll be able to talk about what types of therapeutics we could develop um, in being able to improve the life expectancy and quality of life of people with HIV. So that's a little snapshot of the work that I'm doing. Um, I'm really excited uh, to talk more about um, physician scientist careers and um, the work that we're doing in HIV and in inflammation and um, hope that you found this fun and interesting and maybe you'll get interested in the field too. So that's that. Uh, thanks for watching this mini lesson from a medical scientist. Good luck everyone.